Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Jennifer Richmond, and this is the Dwelling Richly Bible Study. Glad that you're with me. We are jumping into a new lesson. Today's the first day in, and I've got a couple really exciting things to talk to you about. One of them is that I'm going to start an online book club, and you guys can participate with that. You even if you don't have time to be there every day with me, your videos will all get archived and recorded. So the next obvious question is, what book are we going to be reading? And it's right here. <laughs> this one right here. All right. So Bob Hostetler is one of my favorite authors. He is a great Christian author. He has one of the, one of the things I appreciate about him is the practical approach he takes to apologetics, talking to our friends, engaging with our culture, being wise about how we um, just re relate to one another in the church and outside the church as well. And then I found out that he's going to be the keynote speaker at a conference I'm going to in February, the West Coast Christian Writers Conference. Shout out to my West Coast Christian writer friends. Anyway, <laughs> that was weird. I'm like all being weird there, but all right. So uh, Bob, ha oh, I just lost my spot. I pulled that card out and I had it marking my spot. Anyway, Bob Hostetler, this is a book he wrote, came out back in 2012. And when I found out that he was going to be our keynote, I'm like, I'm going to bring down some of my Bob Hostetler books and reread those and get me more familiar with him. And I found out that he had written fiction. I wasn't even aware of that. So now I'm excited. But the book that I'm most excited about is called uh, Quit, as you can see in the title here, Quit Going to Church. And, um, it's just, well, first of all, don't quit going to church. Quit going to church is the point of the book. I think you'll really enjoy it. So I'm going to give you more information after this video about the whens and the where's and the hows on um, starting up the book club with me and joining that. It'll be available here to participate on um, YouTube, but I'm also going to work on getting us together in a Zoom group so that we can engage. We've done that before. Some of you have done that with me. But I want to open by reading a quote from um, the book. Um, called, again, Quit Going to Church. And this is a chapter titled, Quit Sharing Your Faith. And so listen to what he says here. And I love it because um, actually, <laughs> here's what's really funny. I'll just tell you. So right before I was getting ready to do this video, I sat down and I wanted to read a little portion of this book to you. And like I said, it came out in 2012. I haven't read it in a long time. And I thought I wanted to kind of get back in and read it. And I couldn't actually find my original book. So I ended, I ended up buying it again on Amazon. And so I've got, I've got this book here to read. So anyway, I opened it up to read a quote out of the book and literally just randomly just paging through. I think I'll read something encouraging. Maybe I'll read the blurb on the back. And I opened up to page 67 and here's what it says. And are you ready for this? Cause well, I'll just, I'll just read it. Here we go. Literally just grab this by chance, by chance, just grabbed it and opened it up. Here's what we, where's what I found. Um, here we go. If you take a close look at the first chapters of the book of Acts, <laughs> you'll see that in its earliest days, the first church, the church in Jerusalem was settling in. They were having church. They were meeting in small groups. They were praying together, eating together and helping each other out. And, and some preachers, sorry, I got a little distracted there. And some preachers and scholars look at that picture, particularly in the latter verses of Acts 2 and see a picture of an ideal church. But I don't see it that way. Because if it was ideal, God wouldn't have had to change a thing. But he did. Listen, if you continue reading past chapter two of Acts all the way into chapter eight, which is the chapter, by the way, that we're starting on today. Isn't that crazy? And I randomly picked this page. Anyway, that's God. That is totally God. All the way to chapter eight, you'll read the description of, quote, a great persecution that broke out against the church in Jerusalem. Those first followers of Jesus were hunted and jailed, and all but the leaders in the church were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Why would God allow such a thing to happen, especially when everything was going so well? I think the answer is this. God doesn't want his people living in a safe, comfortable little bubble. And he goes on. He goes on and obviously, you know, describes a little bit more what he's talking about. But I just wanted to share that with you. I wanted to share also the backstory of that. Um, here I was ready to share this book and talk to you about having the book club. I opened it randomly and found a page to read to you. And it literally has to do with the exact chapter we're starting today. Isn't that exciting? I thought that was pretty exciting. So grab this book. And when you go on Amazon to uh, look through his materials, just search for Bob Hostetler again. I'll hold it up close so you can see it. 
I'll put it in the notes. What am I doing? You don't need to see me hold up close to the camera. I'll just stick it in the notes. I'll give you a link. I'm not affiliated. I don't have any monetary gain at all. Um, I don't monetize anything on my YouTube channel or anything yet. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll need to make an income doing that. But right now I don't even want to get involved with it. So don't worry about clicking a link. It's not going to, I'm not going to make any money off of doing anything. It just support. Actually, if you go, you can actually make sure you use smile dot amazon.com and then choose a charity you want to support you can choose a church um, that i attend la Mirada christian church or any charity you want and it'll be supported so do that but get this book join the book club look for the details at the end of this post about how to join that book club and uh, let's engage about going to church not going to church being christians what that actually looks like i think we could all use a tune-up in that area i know i i know for me i need that and so i'm looking forward to engaging with you guys in that book with bob hostetler and now i'm super excited to hear him speak um, at the west coast christian writers conference coming up in february where i hope to see some of you who i met last year at the conference just to re-engage with you there as well all right here we go i'm gonna hop over to grab your lesson it's already up on on my blog and i'm gonna hop over to the page so you can see that it is right there hi again lesson six this is day one and as always we begin by reading through the entire passage that we're going to be covering over the next two weeks and so i'll do that in a minute um, right now, I'm going to actually hop over to my YouTube channel. I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done that. So I called that up so you can see it right here. And uh, when you go there, it, it's easy. You just go to Jennifer G. Richmond. I mean, Jennifer Richmond on YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash Jennifer Richmond. Obviously, some of you are watching it on YouTube, but hit the subscribe over here and subscribe to my YouTube channel and then hit notifications. The alarm will go up. Actually, if I do it right now, it'll ask me to sign in. See, sign in. So you just get, you just got to sign in. Um, I think you can use your, your Google account to do that. I'm not 100% sure, but because uh, I'm always signed in on my own channel. But anyway, what you'll see is um, my most recent videos up here, but here's what's cool. Go to playlists right there. Click that. I'll give it a second to load. And there you go. Acts Dwelling Richly Bible Study. And hit that. And what will come up is the very most recent uh, video or teaching that I've done. If it looks like this, that little, that tells you um, that it's from the the podcast cross posts over here to YouTube. And these generally mean, are that is my, um, what are they called? That's my um, uh, talk that I gave on the past chapters. And so, um, Anyway, there you go. They're all in order over here. And so you just scroll down and find the most recent one. You can see them by lesson, Acts, lesson five, days nine and 10. And here we are. I just did Acts seven, uh, chapter six and seven review. And then of course, right now we're doing um, day one. All right, so there's that. So welcome, glad you're here. We're gonna pray and get started into today's lesson. And uh, don't forget to stay at the end and uh, hear the details that I'll add at the end. I'll probably just put it up in a link or something like that on another video that you'll be able to watch and get details about starting that book club. So let's pray and get started, just real short, just to get our focus on God. So grab hands around the table if you're with a group of friends doing this study right now and uh, pause for prayer and uh, let's get started. God, we thank you. You're awesome. You give us wisdom and we just come before you humbly in gratitude for the power of your word and ask that you would give us that wisdom to understand as we're listening and reading and engaging in your word today in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Hop on over, switch to the, there it is. There we go. All right. So um, also a good tip for you guys today. Obviously, you can just open up your Bible and read anything you want that it says to read at the top of the page, Isaiah 53, 6. Um, that's our memory verse for this lesson. Um, we're writing. We always write out a big chunk and we're going to be we're going to be writing all of Isaiah chapter 53 for this lesson. I know we're not writing anything from Acts for this lesson it's because Isaiah 53 is such a significant part of this lesson that I wanted us to write the whole chapter in Isaiah 53. Come on. It is one of the most amazing chapters of the entire Bible. So I'm excited to be able to write that with you. And then um, what you do is you just, if you open this page online, I can get rid of that. When you open this page online, hold the control button down and then click. Um, if you're on your phone, I think you just hover over it and click it. If you're on your computer, control and then click it and look what it does. It opens the scripture for you. There you go. And then let me 
log in actually i forgot to do that before we started um if you if you would log in with your account you can it won't give you the, the ads, which is nice. And I like making it a little bit bigger when I go to read it um, back over here. And then same thing, control, click, open. And now I've got all of uh, chapters eight and nine queued up and ready to go. So I'm going to read that and get ready to do this with you. Okay, here we go. Um, Acts chapters eight and nine. And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over them. But Saul was ravaging the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed them to the Christ. And the crowds, with one accord, paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. That's always so awkward to read it. Like, like I wish it was... The ESV is great. You know, I enjoy the ESV, but it is a little awkward the way they word, they allow the translation to flow because it's a word for word translation instead of thought for thought. We'll talk about that later. So there was much joy in that city. Everyone was very joyful. They were super excited and they were digging it. We'll talk about that later when the lesson comes up. Anyway, this is a fascinating portion here because it talks about this magician who ends up believing. So it's kind of crazy, but listen to this. But there was a man named Simon who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria. So this isn't like, you know, magician you go to Vegas to see on stage. This was, um, you know, spells and casting and different types of things. Again, no commentary. Sorry, I, you're right. Okay, we'll learn about that later. <laughs> All right, there was a man named Simon who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him from the least to the greatest saying, this man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid attention to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. And after being baptized, he continued with Philip and seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. And when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he went and he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Peter, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? 
Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus. And he, as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until they came to Caesarea. But Paul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way and approached, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, but rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, is not this the man who, who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon the name, uh, called upon this name? And he, has he not come here for this purpose to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Paul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him, but his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke, and he disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Spirit, it multiplied. Now, as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down to the saints who, who he also <laughs> he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you, rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was good, full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the upper room, 
All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then, calling the saints and the widows, he presented her alive, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon a Tanner. All right. Well, it kind of leaves us hanging there. We don't get to learn more about Simon the Tanner this week. We'll get back to that another time. All right. So uh, as we're reading today, we're going to be doing something, as we always do, uh, making our notes. So we're writing, I'll read the the instructions here, which I realized after I got going and started reading the passage, I didn't read this to you. And normally I do that and I just jumped right in. All right. So anyway, we're writing our way through Acts. In this lesson, we're writing Isaiah 53. I did explain that. This is the passage from which the Ethiopian eunuch was reading and Philip explains to him. It's one of the most significant chapters in the entire Bible. Day one of every lesson is always set aside to read the entire passage we'll be studying for the next 10 days. As you read Acts chapters eight and nine, complete the map on the following pages, noting significant events, people, and details that happen. Draw a line connecting each text box with the location on the map. So here's what that looks like. You're seeing it online. Of course, you have the, the printed page right there for you. I'll open it up so you can see the whole page. But you'll um, going through Acts eight, and on the next page, Acts uh, nine. So use those boxes there and fill those in. Take a picture of those, post them on social, and uh, let me know how you're enjoying that. Look forward to being back here. We will I'll probably just keep recording this video and jump back in real quick in just a minute and do day two. So. I hope you like this shirt because you're going to see it again. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, looking good, feeling good, happy you're here. Hopefully you are uh, ready to jump in and get this study done with excellence at the beginning of the year. It's a great time to start fresh and really get your Bible study done well with excellence. Please engage, whether you're watching me now live on Facebook or, or maybe you're live on YouTube with me, um, or maybe you're watching the archive. Either way, I'm glad that you're here and I look forward to being with you throughout this entire study. So leave your name, leave a comment, let me know you've been here so that I can pray for you because I want you to know as always that you are loved and prayed for and I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.